Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. And so how many of you would agree with me today that you think it's most more important to hear what God says than what man says? Amen. Now don't misunderstand me. I am not preaching against taking medicine. That's right. Amen. If you need four aspirins to get up in the morning, whatever. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that don't do that. So don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm just pointing out the importance I'm following the advice or the, or the uh, instructions on your little bottle and the importance of following the instructions in the Bible. Which one is most important? And I didn't say, no, I didn't say don't do this one in favor of that one. Do both of them. And so, you know, people get that, run that off the ditch on one side or the other and say, well, he's down there preaching, you ought not to take medicine. No, I'm not. Well, you know, one priest said, well, if you're taking that old medicine, you're going to go to hell. That's not saying, I'm not saying that. I've heard preachers preach that, though, in my lifetime. And so that's not so. I'm just simply asking the question today, what's the most important instruction in your life? What's the most important instruction in your life when the doctor looks at you and says, I can't help you? Which is most important? Well, obviously, it would be the instructions from the book of life. Isn't that right? More important to know what Jesus meant when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So would you say it's important to read the Bible? Yes. Because the Bible is your prescription yes, to health, healing, wholeness, wellness, and deliverance. Yes, right. Amen. But then you hear people that will counter that with something else or counter that with religious thinking or counter that with what they've been taught through the years that was not right or it was wrong. And so we got all these, these factors involved. And so you know what? The mind sometimes gets confused, so it runs to the first thing the eye can see. That's right. Amen. Rather than to the prayer closet before they do that. Yes. Amen. All right, am I getting under your skin yet? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. So I'm just simply saying to us today this, that the Bible has given us keys. These keys are not to bind us up, but these keys are to loose us up, loosen us up and set us free. Know the truth and the truth will set you free. So you can understand that it's very, very important for us as Christians, that we follow the rules, the commands. Now, that, that, that word rules is not a favorite word for a lot of people. But nonetheless, Jesus gives us instructions. Let's put it that way. Jesus gives us instructions to life Amen. and to life more abundantly. And he doesn't say you have to wait till you get to heaven to enjoy your life. And so we see then that uh, here in this 19th verse, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And uh, whatsoever you will bind in, in, on the earth, God said, I'll bind that in, up in heaven. What's that saying? It's simply saying, I will not let that work against you. And so we see then that, uh, that it is important. Our gates, if you, if you stop and look, look at it, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of God, of the, of the living God. That's not the denominational church. Where do you go to church? Oh, I'm a Baptist. 
or I'm a Methodist, or I'm a Presbyterian, or I'm Pentecostal. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> and so we identify the deny. <laughs> I thought that was funny. You deny, I mean, you, you, you are giving a, uh, a denominational answer to the questions Jesus asked here. And some people are so tied to it they can't let go of it. That's right. Amen. Be like the guy that, you know, fell down the cliff. He was crying, oh God, save me. Save me. Save me. And there's a little branch growing out of the side of the mountain there and he grabbed a hold of that, that twig and it stopped its fall. And he said, never mind, God, I found another way. Huh? Huh? He said, I found another way. Well, the question is, have you found another way? Have I found another way? Or am I, or am I even find, interested in finding another way? Am I so religiously bound to a denomination that I can't let go? Amen. And a lot of people are sitting in churches today just like this one, maybe. <laughs> I can't speak to them, I'm not there. But a lot of people are sitting in churches today that cannot let go of their denominational teaching in spite of what the Bible says. Amen. Lord have mercy. So you hear them say, well, healing passed away. You, you hear them say, well, God doesn't do that anymore. They are reading somebody's denominational book and they are eliminating God's word. I think so. <laughs> and so we're bound up. We're tied up, tangled up. And sometimes we don't know what we believe. And so uh, I'm glad they gave me a little bit more time this morning. So gates, he said, the gates of hell, the authority, the word gates is the word for authority and the authority of hell shall not prevail against you. Where did all of the things that, that, that interferes with the joy of living and the joy of life, where's that come from? It comes from the adversary, it comes from Satan. And so we see then that Jesus doesn't want that. Now notice in this reading that we've done so far this morning that Jesus did not tell Peter that he would give him just one key. You got it? He didn't say, Peter, I give unto you one key. No, what did he say? Talk to me now. He said, Peter, I give unto you the keys. Now your house key won't fit your car. It won't crank your car. It won't, it won't open the door of your car. So you've got to have another key. That's two. That's right. Amen. Amen. And the key, you know, won't open up maybe your office Amen. or whatever. So you've got to have more than one key. And so they do have a master key now that opens certain doors and may open more than one door. But they won't open every door that you have to go through. Amen. So if you don't have the key to the door you want to go into, you can't get there. Amen. And so all of these keys are designed to open every door of God's blessing. Am I going too slow? Okay. These keys then, every, every one of these keys fits a door into God's blessing. So if I don't use the key or don't know what the key is and I'm asking God to do something for me and he's saying, it's all in the room, open the door. And so all of the blessings of God, we have to walk through the door and have the key to the door 
that God has so designated. So what do we do? We just kind of go, ooh, help me, Lord. Huh? We've, have you ever done it? Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, go, oh, Lord, if you don't help me, I ain't got no help. You know, people start to cry. You may not have done that. But I don't know. You may have. So what I'm saying to you is, unless I go to the Bible and know the right key to the right door to the right blessing, I can't get it. I can't have it. But yet God has got it in the room for me. And he said, I have given it to you. Open the door. But Lord, I can't get in. It's locked. Well, it's locked, but you've got the key. And then you've got the keys to whatever door it is that God has asked you to walk through. You've got the keys that gives you access into the room where there's health, where there's healing, where there's wholeness, where there's wellness, where there's prosperity, where there's joy, where there's peace, where there's rejoicing. Every door, you've got a key to get in. There's not one door that God has designated in the form of blessing to us that he has not given us a key to open the door and walk into it. And so sometimes people, you know, and I'm not coming against people. I, I, I don't hope you don't think that. I hope you're not sitting there arguing with me in your mind. <laughs> you ever been to church and you and the preacher's preaching, you're sitting there arguing all the time <laughs> with your mind. <laughs> and, and you say, you try to be a ventriloquist. I don't agree with that. I don't think that's right. And we yet we, we got that smile on their face, but down inside. God can't even get through that door. <laughs> Hello. We church. Wake up, everybody. <laughs> And so we wonder sometimes why we can't have what God says we, that he has designated to his people. It's yours. It's yours. I died for it. I died to acquire that for you. I died to give that to you. It is yours. Take it. And so what do we do? We got our little pill bottle from the drugstore. And we fight over it. We, it says refrigerate, keep in the refrigerator. So we clear everything off of the shelf. <laughs> and we put, that, we put that prescription right there where we know exactly where it's at. We know exactly what time we've got to take it. We know exactly how to take it. And that's what we do with it. Now, I'm not, you heard me a while ago. Now, I don't want to keep clarifying this. I'm not telling you not to take your medicine. That's right. But I am telling you that the word of God is a medicine. Amen. And the Bible said it's health to all of our flesh. Amen. That's all I'm saying to you this morning. And I'm just trying to go back and go over some things that we have been knowing for so long, for a long, long time. And so it is important to know the keys. What are the keys to prosperity where your money is concerned? Where do you find the keys to where, your, where your money is concerned? You find the key to it in the Bible. Where do you find the key to your health? You find it in the Bible. And on and on we could go with that, but that's enough on that. So Jesus told Peter he would give unto him the keys, plural, keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now, well, let me, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but notice this, he, he didn't say he'd give him one key, he said he'd give him the keys. And he said he would give him the keys, which was his word, to those belonging to the kingdom. 
Now look with me in Colossians chapter 1. Let's just kind of clarify this a little bit for those of you who may not know. I don't know how many that would be. But look in Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 through 13. So that you can identify where you're at. How many of you today can identify where you're at? (laughs) Do you not know where you're at? (laughs) Where where are you at? Identify. (laughs) Some, Some of you look real puzzled when I said that. Where am I at? (laughs) Where are we located? Where are you located now? You're not answering. You're just like me when the preacher, and I was listening to the preacher, and he's asking these questions. I kept my mouth shut, too, because I I was concerned I was going to give a wrong answer, you know. And I learned that real good one time from Dr. Fred Price. And so I'm on the front row and I'm Mr. I'm Mr. Religious Excitement. <laughs> and I was really, I'm telling you, I was just enjoying so much what he was, what he was preaching. It was just so, so real, you know. But he come by and he said, how many of you believe you're sitting in your seat? <laughs> Both hands went up. I was trying my best to impress him. But I'll tell you one thing, it was hard to impress Dr. Price. And he, he walked right there, over the, right over there in front of me, stood right there. And I thought he was going to just give me a pat on the back for it. And he said, why would you believe you're sitting in your seat? Don't you know you're sitting in it? Why would you have to believe you're sitting in it? Don't you know you're sitting in it? And I tell you, if there, if there would have been a button I could have punched... And the whole floor would fall out, you know, and I'd be gone, you know, and he wouldn't, couldn't come over and say, this, this guy don't know where he's at. <laughs> so you've got to locate where you're at today, where God is concerned. Amen. You are at church, for those of you who may not know. <laughs> so would, you, would you say that with me? <laughs> say, I am at church. Good, now we're locating ourselves. Now watch this. Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. It's a location verse. It's a location verse. Amen. It's God's, what do you call that thing you got put in your car? It's in your car. But this is God's GPS for us. Okay, listen. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, that is the word able, which has made us able to be partakers. So now I don't have a I don't have an excuse for not not being able. For he has made me able. Listen, God is not only giving you himself himself, but in giving himself to us, he has given us Jesus. And he's given us the Holy Spirit. And so giving thanks to the Father which has made us able. Now let me ask you another question, if I can. And these questions are just simply to keep us, keep our minds going here. That we don't, you know, leave service early in our mind. (laughs) Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us able. Now what's he made me able to do? He has made me able to partake. How many of you partook of something this morning? Well, let's start now with coffee. How many of us partook of coffee? First thing this morning. Why did you partake of of coffee? You know, unless your husband or your wife brought it to you, you were able. So Sue asked me this morning, you know, or yesterday, did I want to do the coffee pot when I got up this morning or did I want her to do it? And at that point, I I didn't tell her, but I said, I'm disabled, I'm in the bed. (laughs) 
So Sue, Sue was able. <laughs> she says she's always able. Now there's a time or two I get up when I do it. So God has what? Enabled what? What has he enabled me to do? I'm just trying to get you to think. He has enabled me to partake. Now when you set a piece of chocolate pie on the table in front of me, I don't ask you if I'm able. <laughs> I know that I'm able. Sometimes I want to take two forks. I know that I'm able to partake. Now, how many of you know how many blessings that God has promised us in the scripture? I don't know. I'm serious. I don't know how many. They say there's a lot. But anything that is a blessing and a precious promises, he has enabled me to partake of that. So what I have to do is find out what has God made available to me? Where do I find that out? I find that from his word. What has he given us in his word? He's given us keys. And so I am, a part- I am enabled to be a partaker of wherever the room of all of these blessings are. He's given me the keys to get in the room. Amen. And so if I need whatever it is I need, whatever it is that I'm dealing with in life, God has given me a key to that. Amen. You know, sometimes people say, well, I just don't feel very joyous. Well, they are not in the room. You know, if somebody says, I just don't have much peace, they're not in the room. That's right. They may be a good person, but they're not in the room. Amen. There's some good people out there in the world, just not in your house. That's right. But these people, you know, that, that uh, are not experiencing joy. There's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. But you got to get in the room. And if you don't get in the room, God still loves you, us, us, us. He still loves us. He still cares for us. But he said, come on and get in the room. And he's given given me a key. And you know, we could go through a lot of the keys, but one of the major keys, obviously, is faith. And it's not just the subject that we preach on. It's, it's something that God has, uh, has given to us as a key. Yes. So I need to take that key of faith and unlock that door into the joy room. Yeah. 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 And one t- once I get into the joy room, I got to act like it. Instead of going in there, look, you've been like, you know, people like they've been uh, uh, sucking on a lemon. When we get into the joy room, we ought to express what we're in the room to get. And so if I said to you this morning, give a little joy praise here. That's a key. That is a key. Amen. Now you can go into the depth of theology and all that stuff you want to go into, but that's a key. Rejoicing is a key. Some people do not do it because they're stubborn. And they're listening to somebody that tells you you don't have to do that. So they come to church and sit on the church and refuse. And maybe play on their phone. I'm not mad, really. <laughs> but they play on their phone and they don't listen. Yes, sir. Amen. And they're in the situation they're in because they won't listen. That's right. Come on, Pastor. 
Thank you so much for viewing the program with us today. I so appreciate you being there. I was thinking as I was bringing the message today what Jesus said. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from or out of the mouth of God. Well, we know this, that God is talking to us through his word. So it's so important to know the significance of the word of God in our life, the scriptures of the Bible that's contained in the Bible. And you know, Paul in his writings, he told the, the people that he was speaking with and preaching to, he said, I would have shared strong meat with you, but you are a babe in Christ. And so I have, uh, he had to feed them with milk. So Jesus talking about receiving the word, the word then, the word of God, causes people to grow spiritually. And so sometimes people can just lay aside the word of God or the Bible and just depend on someone else to preach it to them. And we certainly need that as well. But there's uh, those times throughout the day, throughout the week, that we need to pick the Bible up because there's where we find God speaking to us at any point in time. So we understand then that what Jesus was saying to us, man shall not live by, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So that's what we endeavor to do, just bring you the word and just uh, pray that you receive it and uh, that it blesses you and that the word is causing spiritual growth in your life. And we just believe that's happening right now where you are concerned. Thanks again for viewing the program with us. Let us pray, Father. We pray for the people there that have viewed the program. We thank you, Father, that the Spirit of God is there with them and in them. And we thank you, Lord, that the voice of God can be heard uh, as we follow on to know you in a greater way. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time right here on Victorious Living. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.